In this video, we are going to discuss the Radix data architecture and how Radix is sharded to achieve true scalability. Sharding is when you split up a single data source into smaller, more manageable chunks. Those shards of data can then be distributed across multiple servers to spread the load and maintain high performance. We realized early on that for a distributed ledger, splitting the data into ad hoc shards would not work. Any later changes to the shard structure would require the entire network to reorganize. And the larger the ledger became, the more time consuming and expensive this reorganization would become. Ad hoc sharding also makes it harder to locate a particular piece of data or transaction, making any query on the ledger more complex, therefore taking longer to return the relevant data. Instead, Radix adopts a sharding policy which will never change, no matter how large the ledger grows. First, we predefined a shard-friendly data structure. And second, set in stone how that data structure can be chopped up into incredibly small pieces, 18.4 quintillion shards to be exact. To give you a sense of how many shards this is, if you took all the data that Google stores, including YouTube, Google Cloud, their own copy of the internet, and spread it across 18.4 quintillion shards, there would only be four bits of data per shard. This incredibly fine-grained data structure not only allows Radix to store incomprehensible amounts of data, it also makes it incredibly easy to find the data that you want. This is thanks to a deterministic process that identifies which shard any piece of data lives within. All data is associated with a source address, usually the sender of a transaction or a message. The shard of an address is deterministically calculated by taking a modulo of the public key used to generate the address over the total shard space to derive the shard index. This allows anyone to simply and correctly calculate the shard index of any address or public key and locate all events such as transactions associated with that address or key. This deterministic indexing into the data structure provides two incredibly powerful things. First, it makes it easy to find the data you are looking for. Secondly, it groups together related transactions and ungroups unrelated ones. So why are these two things so powerful? Well, this becomes clearer if we compare how you search for specific data on a blockchain compared to how you search for it on Radix. On a blockchain, all transactions are bundled together into blocks, and blocks are arranged sequentially to form a chain. Which block a transaction is contained within is effectively random. To find the transaction history of a single address, you therefore need to search the entire blockchain for relevant transactions. Bitcoin has a blockchain of over 400 million transactions, all of which would need to be inspected in order to collect every transaction of a single address. The grouping of related transactions and ungrouping of unrelated ones is very powerful when you start thinking about the throughput of the network. Your public key determines the shard your account lives on. You can therefore only spend from that shard. If I make two transactions, one to Bob and one to Alice, from the same account, then these would originate from the same shard. It's therefore trivial to detect if I am attempting to double spend, as an extensive search of the ledger is not required in order to detect it. Everyone already knows where to look. In the same vein, this deterministic data structure ensures that two transactions on two different shards are in no way related. If I send transactions to Alice and to Bob from two different accounts, then they cannot be related, and therefore there is no need to make sure the transactions don't conflict. They are already provably unrelated. This allows unrelated transactions to be totally asynchronous, meaning that 18.4 quintillion shards can process transactions simultaneously and in parallel. Once you have a highly sharded ledger, the next challenge is to make sure that you have enough nodes present in the network who are maintaining a sufficient quantity of shards 
in order to ensure the security of the ledger as a whole. When a node joins the Radix network, it generates itself an identity. In the same way that an address or public key can be used to identify an account shard, a node identity is used to identify its root shard, which it will always maintain. Depending on the node's capacity, based on its CPU or bandwidth, the node can then scale up or down how many of the total shards it is serving, depending on how much load it has been subjected to. The more shards a node services, the more likely it is to get fees and rewards. Every node attempts to maintain as many shards as it can, scaling down and maintaining less shards if it is unable to keep up and stay synchronized. At the start, when there are fewer accounts and transactions, it is likely that all nodes will maintain all shards. The more nodes that are maintaining a shard, the more secure a shard and its history is, due to the number of redundant copies of the shard information being maintained. As the network grows, the incentives policy in the Radix network is designed such that underserved shards become a financial opportunity for node operators. Fewer nodes on a shard increase the possibility of earning more rewards for validating transactions that originate from those shards. This allows the market to naturally gravitate towards supporting as many shards as possible, especially those which are underserved. All of this results in a ledger data structure that is state sharded and scales linearly, without overhead, from tiny data sets to ones large enough to serve every person and business in the entire world.